It is the top of the hour, actually one minute after. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our latest uh, mini session. We have these going throughout the course of the conference. Uh, we have, uh, I think, two more this afternoon, and then we've got three more tomorrow. So check out the schedule. Uh, you can find it at the top of our virtual booth. Uh, this afternoon, this one, for the next 15 minutes or less than, is uh, Fabulous Fluid, Exploring the People's Health Forms Approval Builder. We've been working with the Forms and Approval Builder for the last five or six years. I think that it was introduced in 2014. Right around there was the, was the original classic version of the, uh, of the People's Health Forms Approval Builder. Um, and it has, the fluid version has been around now for a few years. I think 2017 was when that was launched. So we've got a chance to, uh, to play around with it quite a bit. Um, I'm going to show you an excerpt from what originally was an hour-long webinar that we've hosted before, and we'll be hosting again sometime this winter. So if, you, if you're looking for the extended dance remix of this particular session, keep an eye open for, uh, for the hosting of the, of the full webinar sometime in the next couple of months. All right. So, uh, for this session, what we did was we actually took some real-world scenarios uh, and looked at how we would approach building those out using the PeopleSoft Forms or Approval Builder. In this case, the, uh, the form that we identified is actually one that's used by one of our clients, Hennepin County in Minnesota. Uh, it's a life insurance form that they use. Right now it's a manual process. We looked at what it might be like to recreate this as a, uh, a fluid form within the uh, PeopleSoft Forms or Approval Builder. So that's what we're going to be doing. This is what the form looks like today. It's a two-page form, one where the user fills out information on the enrollment form, and then a page of instructions. So one of the things that we are really excited about with regards to uh, the Forms Approval Builder are the drag and drop capabilities of building forms, and you'll see those in just a moment. What I'm going through right now is just showing, uh, uh, putting tiles on my home page to allow me to have access to the different pieces and parts that I need for my forms. Uh, the one tile is allowing me to design forms, accessing the form builder itself. Uh, the other tile, my forms, accessing any forms that I'm authorized to initiate as a user. And then finally, an approvals tile that will show me if I'm an approver or an evaluator of forms uh, will allow me to access those for approvals. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the design forms tile and get into the tool itself. I'm going to name my form. Uh, it needs to have a, a relatively short name, but that's okay. There are some fields here that I'm going to go ahead and fill in uh, uh, a label for my form. I'm kind of limited in terms of the number of characters that I can put in there, a description for the form that I'm building. Uh, another nice thing about the Forms Approval Builder is effective dates. Uh, so I can set up uh, when I want this form to be available and when I want it to uh, uh, be unavailable once people should be done using it. I can go ahead and start adding fields to my form. Uh, here I'm going to essentially name the segment that I'm creating and then add some fields within that segment. This top portion of the form is supposed to be completed by HR. Uh, I don't have any way of noting that aside from just the, uh, the header. Um, I don't have any way of, of blocking that off from the, from the form initiator, the person that's filling that out. So we'll just have to hope that they follow directions and don't try to fill that information in, reserving it for whoever the appropriate HR rep is. There are certain lengths that we can designate for our fields. We've got three options there. We can determine whether or not a field is mandatory or not. And now I'm going to go ahead and start building a segment out that requires the information to be filled in by the applicant or by the employee. So I'll provide a... Uh, a short little segment title or header, and then start adding a number of text blocks. And I can go in and, and name those fields for each. Um, you'll notice with the asterisk that those are mandatory. One of the nice things would be uh, to be able to have those forms pre, have those fields pre-populate. Um, I can do that with the aid of event mapping if I want to pull in a, a developer. But in terms of using the configuration capabilities of the form tool itself, I'm not able to do that. But I can still set up the forms and have the user fill those out. Um, another uh, feature is being able to define codes within a dropdown that I set up. So I can go ahead and assign those within my, my gender 
field that I've dropped onto the form. Um, one of the limitations that I don't know is published or not is the, uh, the number of field types that you can use within the forms. You're restricted, and I'm trying to find, I've got a, a cheat sheet. So you're allowed up to 10 checkboxes, 5 long text fields, 8 date fields, and 10 drop-down fields within your form. Uh, you cannot exceed those limits. So you have to keep that in mind as, as you're looking at ways to use this tool, uh, what can fit within those parameters. I'm adding a state and country field to my form, and I want to be able to use the, uh, the prompt on the state field, but first I need to add a country field to my form and allow those two fields to link by creating a, uh, uh, by uh, aligning the prompt values from country to state. So I'm going to go ahead and set the prompt record to the country table. And then go ahead and also set that field as the prompt control for the state field. So now the value that I select within the country field will drive the values, obviously, that I see within the state field. So that's a nice functionality, being able to restrict the valid values that people see uh, in those prompt lookups. So now I can, uh, I can see the appropriate state or province choices for the country that I've selected as Canada. I'll drop in a few more text fields. This is all based on that, uh, the form that I'm working from, that life insurance enrollment form. These are all the different fields that are reflected on that. Uh, it would be nice if I could default some of this information because Hennepin County is going to be the employer name for everybody who fills out this form within our organization. Um, unfortunately, the fluid version of the forms at Approval Builder does not allow for defaulting. Uh, again, you can accomplish that with event mapping, but not within the configuration capabilities of the tool. Now I see that I've got some instructional text that would be great to add to my form. So I can go ahead and do that. Uh, but ultimately, I'm going to have to, uh, that's only going to be visible on a, uh, on a different part of my form. I can't actually have it on my form page. Set up some values for my drop down. Five minute warning, Scott. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so fortunately, you're going to get the, uh, the bulk of this, but I, I'm going to run out of time, I think. Let me see. Um, you're also restricted in terms of the length of your field labels. Uh, so you have to get creative in some cases. With this one, for spouse and dependent coverage, uh, we have to hope that the, uh, <laughs> that the user understands what SP and DP stand for without being able to spell that out on the form. So again, it does require some thought in terms of how you're going to use this tool and what kind of business cases you can automate with it. The, uh, uh, many of you might be aware of the fact that uh, you can use the Forms and Approval Builder to add new data to PeopleSoft, but you can't use it to update existing data. Um, it was not designed to uh, leverage component interfaces to update existing data. Although you can, you can use a CI mapper to, uh, to insert new data. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit. So here I'm adding my instructions. Uh, if I've got those formatted with HTML, I can go ahead and just cut and paste that in there. There's no rich text formatting tool built into the Forms and Approval Builder, so uh, you'll want to leverage HTML code if you can. Uh, when you finish your form, you're going you're to designate when you want that to be locked down. Uh, you can have it be open for edits throughout the entire approval process. You can lock it down after approval or lock it down after the, the initial uh, initiator submits the form for review. Um, there's no way to conditionally determine which fields might be locked down under what circumstances or to which users. They're either all open or all closed. Let's 
see if there is, well, I've still got, uh, we can go ahead and do some simple linear uh, workflow. We just whipped past that. You can't do any kind of conditional branching to allow for, uh, uh, for logic on which approvers approve what kinds of uh, requests based on data within the form. So here we are filling out the form. Um, you'll notice that, again, without being able to pre-populate, um, I need to have my user fill in all this information. Hopefully they do it correctly. In this case, uh, I've accidentally filled out the information for the HR uh, office. And my instructions are hidden in this hamburger menu. So unless I know to look there, I'm not going to have the additional information to fill out this form properly. So fortunately, uh, as the user, I knew that they were hiding back there, and I could go ahead and look those up. Uh, now I'll go in and fill out the rest of the information. Uh, I will again have to trust on my users that they'll fill in all of the necessary information and leave any uh, appropriate fields blank. I can certainly have somebody elect to uh, have coverage, but then neglect to include their spouse information or their dependents or beneficiaries. Uh, I'll have to go back to them and ask for that information separately. Uh, and I do need to show them the entirety of the form. I can't conditionally elect which fields to display or which segments to display under which circumstances. So I'm going to go ahead and submit my form. There are a few fields up here that, uh, that show regardless of whether you really want them to or not. There's a description field that, can, uh, that the user can go ahead and just enter free text in, and then it shows uh, uh, the creation date and the approval status. <clears throat> I can see who the approvers are. Go ahead and skip forward. I can view the forms that I've submitted. Uh, another thing is security. Uh, I can lock down who, is, who has the appropri appropriate access to fill out forms, but I can't lock down access to who can see forms. So if you've got access to, to uh, uh, fill out a form, you've got access to see all of the forms, even if you're not uh, able to fill those out, if you're not eligible. I think that has actually changed, Scott. Oh, did that change? Yeah, I think that you can. That's good to know. Now restrict that uh, okay. security more than it than it has been. So here's the approvers view. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this really quick, and uh, if you will bear with me for a moment, Paul. There is one other very quick video that I'd like to show. So you've seen what that form looks like with the Forms Approval Builder. I'm just going to give you a quick peek at what that same form would look like if we were to automate it using the GTE Forms tool. Uh, there's the form again that we were looking to automate. And this is what it looks like um, using only the configuration capabilities of GTE Forms inside PeopleSoft. So short and sweet form, if the person is declining coverage, I don't have to show them all of the additional fields and segments. But if they do want to enroll, then we're going to, going to uh, respond based on their, on their selection of yes. So now I can go ahead and um, I can view additional info uh, with regards to employee details if I want. All of that information is pre-populating the form dynamically. Uh, I see the section now for uh, declaring coverage and dependents life insurance and the beneficiaries. I can fill those inf that information in. By the way, if you're here for event mapping, we'll start in just a minute. Yes, we're running just a little bit long on this, but fortunately this is a very quick video. Uh, I also have a grid in here to capture the beneficiary information. The Delivered People's Health Forms approval tool does not allow for grids. Uh, this certainly is convenient for being able to capture repeating row information. Uh, I've got an acknowledgment down here that I need to uh, 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 
acknowledge. And you can also see that I've got instructional text placed at various places throughout the form. I can have that at the top of the page. I can have that within each segment. I can have that between fields. Really anywhere that I might want to be able to provide instruction to my user, I can include text, rich text, formatted in whatever way that I want. I can include URL links. Um, I can include uh, graphic images as well as video content.